Hello and welcome to Carbondale, Illinois for the third of 25 races in this year's TM Master Cup Series Championship, the Ronda Carbondale. This is a triangular shaped racetrack similar to the Pocono Raceway. Turn 1 has a very wide exit with that wall showing up very quickly. Turn 2 a very fast dog leg. The pit exit is in between turns 1 and 2 and that has been a problem in years past. Turn 3 a closing radius corner that's a great passing opportunity leading onto the front straightaway. This track has been a staple of the TM Master Cup Series going all the way back into the 1950s. Only twice has this track been absent from the calendar, in 2007 when this track was being renovated and in 1983 for similar reasons. Now let's meet the 45 cars that will start today's event. On the pole in car number 8 is Saul Fischel and David Krikorian on the outside of the front row, both drivers of Jewish ancestry. Chris Davenport as in the inside of row number 2 along with Joe Olenek. Scott Soidler is in with a promoter's option, his first start of the year, and Ryan Matthews backing up a good run in LA. Marco Castaneda in row 4 along with Ben Atkins, the former Dash Cup champion. Ingrid Hadeland made several qualifying efforts to get into the top 10, beating out Arto Kekkonen. Zelda Ashby and Alessandro Rossini with, with good efforts in row 6. Going back to row 7, Liv Eklund and Brandon LaRoe having an excellent effort this weekend. Luciano Savarol and Greg Woodard in a blue car this week in row 8. Scott Bates from Oklahoma and Tony Durbin in row 9. Both of them fan favorites and got a warm reception in driver introductions. Kurt Pliskin in car 16 and Tim Ruiz continues to surprise. Mason Yokoyama, excellent effort for the Independence Trophy contender and Ike Durbin in row 11. Row 12, Woody Watts is back with a promoter's option and Yevgeny Kuznetsov, the popular Russian in row 12. Cameron Taylor and debutante Alicia Reyes in row 13. Row 14, Adrian Devereaux and Craig Yatzer who has outqualified his teammate in all three races so far. Ian Cooper in a yellow car this week in row 15 along with John Dilks showing signs of improvement. Gaspar D'Souza is in car number 20 after a Serrano had an accident this weekend and Casey Lester in these number zero car. Tom Moore way back in row 17 along with Truman Ellison. Nathan Ormond and another promoter's option Anthony Griffith in row 18. Packer Carroll in row 19 along with Chuck Johnson in car 32. Freya Mast and Zach Webster in row 20 both looking for improvement. Gareth Hunt, Lucas Grabert in row 21 about where we expected both of them to be. They've had a long weekend. And running out in row 22 is Daniel Lechleiter and Clay Gibson, the two main Tenere cars. Carl Hampton IV making his debut, the Arkansas native, in row number 23 for New Liberty Racing in their third car. Of course, Carl is related to the founder of the Carl Superstar chain. The field is in the hands of Saul Fischel. The 18-year-old leads them to the green, and we are underway in the round of Carbondale. Great start by Fischel and by Chris Davenport in that Royal Blue number 17 car. Krikorian swinging it wide as so many cars are going to do on the outside in turn one. And here is Fischl now leading the field through turn two. And into turn three, Fischl looks like he's going to lead the first lap, ducking that car below the apron. That is a bit risky. But look at that run on the opening lap by Fischl as he now sweeps into the lead and it doesn't look like he has any immediate challengers. Davenport trying to trying to take over second from Joe, or trying to take over third, sorry, from Joe Olenek. Tom Moore had a very poor qualifying effort in car number four. Wasn't able to get back out for a second qualifying effort because so many, um, so much time was used up by both the Lynx racing drivers. That, and it looks like that the Volpe racing team seemed to be working more on how he would perform in the race. I don't know if that's going to be the best idea, especially since he has one of the biggest brick walls of the series, that being Ian Cooper right in front of him in that beautiful twin spirit livery as Cooper shuts the door a little bit. They're leaving a bit of gap, bit of room for more to get on the inside, but that two car is also, has always been a very difficult person to get around through their entire career. Cameron Taylor, car number seven, also a bit disappointing in qualifying, especially since his teammate was on the front row, but the Ohioan looking for a great run here in the opening few laps, and Taylor already getting three wide with Woody Watts and Craig Yonser. And uh, that seven car is looking looking pretty fast, but he's also got Mason Yokoyama up there, and Yokoyama's been fast all weekend. This car was rather good-naturedly booed in driver introductions. Of course, the uh, Murray State being a couple hours south here, and this is deep in SIU territory. Um, uh, Kurt Pliskin, though, has had a decent weekend, so for his sponsor's home race, he's uh, doing quite well this so far this weekend. Now, here's the two Lynx racing drivers. Liv Eklund in the yellow 11 and Ingrid Hadeland in that in that red, blue, and purple 19. They both made, they both made several qualifying attempts after everyone had gotten through their qualifying laps. They took second attempts and burned through the entire happy hour session 
requalifying, and that irritated several of their competitors. But it was, but that's not against the rules, as ill-advised as that might be, uh, by pulling your own qualifying time and requalifying. The two Lynx drivers, uh, uh, they would have started way in the back had they not requalified, and both of them wound up well in the top half of the field. That's actually the fastest both have been in their careers so far, seemingly. And here is Carl Hampton, the fourth. He is well off the pace all weekend long. Uh, New Liberty Racing uh, brought him in, uh, not quite at the last minute, but uh, the ASCC regular finding it a little bit hard to adjust to the amount of horsepower that a TM Master Cup Series car has, and that these cars are a lot lighter than um, ASCC cars and require a lot more technique. Hampton uh, hasn't hit anything yet, but he's finding it a rough going. Hopefully he has a clean day today. David Krikorian is, is up to second. Now DK is uh, leading, the, leading the group here at Hot as Walter Racing. Uh, as some were expecting him to do, but I think there, w I think he's not taking Joe Alenic very lightly. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of concern uh, from the Hunters Walter camp at DK start to the season. Now there is a lot of people in the Matthews Motorsports camp that are quietly impressed with how uh, well their season has got off, has got off to already with that excellent run at Los Angeles, where Matthews actually could have won the race had he not been in, uh, had he not uh, come across Liv Eklund when he did. Scott Stoidler is making his first start of the year as Hot as Walter Racing's third driver in this car number 26. Uh, Stoidler, a bit of a fan favorite from days gone by. Uh, Hot as Walter Racing's where his career started, and he still definitely has what it takes to run at the front here in this series. I think circumstances are more what kept him in a, th in a third driver role, and uh, if you're looking for a third driver and you're a top team, well, there's really no one better you could get. Scott Stoidler's had a great career. He's got a couple of wins to his name and um, he's having a good run so far. Now here's Gaspar D'Souza in car number 20. Hector Serrano drove this car in the first two races and he was supposed to drive here, uh, here this weekend. In fact, he was entered as the driver, but uh, Serrano had an accident. He actually fell off a ladder in the garage and, um, uh, broke, and uh, broke his leg on the fall. Uh, now, uh, Ortega Motorsport is in a bit of an interesting scenario here because D'Souza, their third driver, had actually gotten promoter's options for the first two races. Uh, Serrano will be out for probably uh, until midsummer, and D'Souza is just going to take over car number 20. He's already got a relationship with KLTV as well, so that helps even on the commercial side of things. Now, here's Carl Hampton about to be lapped by Saul Fischel on lap 17. Now, I'd like to point out, Fischel's got a massive lead right now. I don't, I don't quite know where that came from. Oh! Fischl's not giving him any room. I don't, if you got a back marker that far off the pace, you, you at least have to be re, uh, cognizant that um, that they were actually able to see you and get out of the way. But Fischl did not cut Hampton any slack when I think he probably should have. Krikorian giving, you see that's, now what Krikorian and Olenek are doing is probably a bit more, is probably the right thing to do there. They both of them gave Carl Hampton a lot of space because Hampton's obviously slow and off the pace. And yeah, the officials should probably black flag him, but if you see a guy uh, that is obviously having handling issues, best to give him all the room you can. Um, here is Chris Davenport, car number 17, who's apparently not learned that lesson. Either that or uh, Hampton's not, doesn't feel comfortable letting Davenport go by on the out, uh, going by on his outside. Now, this is getting a bit ridiculous. Uh, at, this, at this point, that's not on, on Davenport. That's clearly on the driver of the 49 car, because Unlike what Eklund was doing at, La at Los Angeles, uh, Carl Hampton is a couple seconds off the pace, and you can tell because he's really jamming the field up way worse than Eklund could in 100 laps um, just last race out. And, uh, oh, we got a one-finger salute from the 17 car. Can't say it's unearned. Rossini going three wide. Now, some people think uh, Alessandro Rossini is a bit too anonymous this year. You saw that move right there, then I don't think you'd be saying that. This, uh, Alessandro Rossini's got a lot of pride in his job, in his craft. He's got a lot of right to be. Volpe is very, very pleased with how he's been performing, and that's just another, uh, that's just more evidence to that. Castaneda has been a bit under, has been uh, kind of flying under the radar in this car number nine so far, but uh, he's been doing quite well so far this year as a rookie for the Gessler team, for uh, Richter, I should say. That's going to take me a while to unlearn, isn't it? But he's been doing quite well, as have both the Lynx drivers. Now, there's a, there's more drama involving uh, Eklund and Hadeland. Actually, I should just say Eklund in this case. But um, Eklund was, of course, uh, called to the steward's office right before the start of the race. And if we have time, we might explain um, what that was all about. But uh, Ek, but uh, Eklund is not exactly in the uh, 
in the right frame of mind, you could say, to start the race. But uh, couldn't tell Ingrid Hadeland that. She's as motivated as ever. And as for as all the attention has, has been thrown at Eklund for uh, being a fighter, you got to also say the same thing about Hadeland because Ingrid Hadeland has stepped up or stepped up her game more than what I think a lot of people were expecting. Remember, Ingrid Hadeland was also was also a bit underrated coming into this season, even though she did win Rookie of the Year. And here's Zelda Ashby, a much more senior female driver on the tour, getting cleaned out on the outside by Luciano Savarol, her teammate. That's that's a good move, good setup there by Savarol. Is he going to be able to take the spot? I don't think so. Ashby not giving it, not uh, not making it easy, but uh, all three women in this uh, in that shot right there uh, all deserve some credit for their efforts. Carl Hampton getting in Cameron Taylor's way. There's nobody to his outside. Lo so much room out there. Yeah, uh, I, I think the officials need a black flag him at, at some point because, quite frankly, this is getting quite ridiculous quite quickly. Uh, Hampton appears to be going four wide all by himself, but um, getting a little ridiculous. Here is Alicia Reyes. The, now, oh, Kuznetsov in the 15, sliding it in there to turn three, almost causing a big accident with Reyes, who's making her debut here. Alicia Reyes from Wisconsin was the leading candidate to take the 11 car that Liv Eklund currently has. Um, and uh, Reyes, is, she's got she's got some speed, but uh, clearly a little bit more uh, time might be needed in that car. You do kind of wonder if Lynx Racing is giving Reyes a shot just to kind of, uh, as a thank you to how well she's been doing in the TM Light Series, and maybe to kind of use her to motivate Eklund and Hadeland to, uh, newer, to uh, greater heights, although they seem to be doing a pretty good job of doing that themselves. That's a very interestingly run team. Um, Lynx Racing recently both... Uh, boasting that they have a higher union membership than anyone else in the field, which is actually exceedingly rare in this field. Now here is Ben Atkins, the former Dash Cup champion, has come to life here. Look at him go! In that car number 90, the green and black car, taking his much more experienced team owner, trying to take him around the outside in turn one. The the, uh, the Englishman really knows what he's doing here. And he's got he's going to make it move! He's going to make it work! A lot of cars being able to... Uh, get good runs going around the outside. Add Atkins' name to that list. And now Saul Fischl is starting to run down the back markers. Now, I should point out that uh, now Fischl was involved in an incident during the driver's meeting, and I'm I'm not joking when I say that some people were, that there was a uh, rather heated exchange between Fischl and Liv Eklund before the driver's meeting started. Um, the details of that, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to let be because they are they are all uh, uh, subject of uh, speculation. But official was definitely um, definitely heated to start this race. Uh, clearly upset, and he must be channeling that anger into a drive so far that is uh, quite impressive. No one is look behind him. You can't see anyone back there because he is just driven away from everybody. Freya Mast in the 898 is trying to hold on to keep herself on the lead lap. But I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah, official's not going to have any problems getting by Mast here. And uh, I not not exactly taking his time with the back markers, but he's built up such a massive lead that it's going to really take a caution or a pit stop error in order for anyone to catch him at this point. Here is Castaneda in car number nine, trying to hold off Eklund. And oh, oh, there's a problem with the nine. Castaneda is in trouble. That's going to be an early retirement for the young Mexican. And it's that's bit very disappointing because Castaneda on a long run pace was looking pretty good today. Hadland trying to take Eklund around the outside. Eklund on the apron trying to fight back. Savarol probably sitting behind there, not getting too close, wondering what's going to happen because the two links, uh, the two links drivers, not giving each other that much room. Hadland swinging it wide off of turn number one, and this is for a, this is going to be for a position. Hadland around the outside. I think that's going to stick. Eklund throws it into turn three. No! Hadeland shuts the door. Great move by the Norwegian to take the to take the position away. That's 10th for Hadeland now. As Eklund continues to try to fight back. There, uh, there is a lot of fight in both of them. Ryan Matthews into the pits here on lap 40. Uh he's the that looks scheduled. Uh this looks a bit early, but uh, they don't seem very concerned over there in the 06 pit. So 
I would say this is a scheduled stop by Ryan Matthews, and I don't think that's the worst decision in the world. Okay, Daniel Lechleiter, what a move there to try to keep himself in the lead lap. Fischl coming into the pits in Carnival Rain. Lechleiter in the 10. Oh, oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble, yeah, Lechleiter is in trouble. And that's very disappointing because Lechleiter's had a lot of problems. He's a very talented race driver, but just very, very unlucky so far. Hopefully he can get him, hopefully uh, this is just the worst weekend he has so far. Back with Alicia Reyes as she's doing battle with, oh! Oh, big hit into the wall. Now, the 99 that you see on this car, that's not a random number. That that number was uh, uh, to honor the uh, great aviator Amelia Earhart, as uh, Alicia Reyes' uh, family is, uh, they do have a long history of being uh, pilots, as Reyes, the only race driver in her family. As we're looking at Gaspar D'Souza in car, or no, that is Brandon LaRoe, the 25 car. I can't read. As we're, oh, that's a bit sketchy there. Laro merging into, uh, oh, right into Eklund's door. Is that going to be, oh, Eklund gives him a swipe as she had to uh, enter her pit stall at some point. I don't think that was on purpose, but I think somebody in the 25 uh, pit box should be told there were cars coming. Nothing Brandon Laro can really do at that point, but there's probably something that uh, Pitwall could have done maybe. Uh, either way, Brandon LaRoe having a good weekend so far, and watch out for LaRoe. He's quietly been he quietly been having an amazing year. And what is Woody Watts doing sideways in the pit lane? Hey, that is that is quite that is uh, a bit strange, really. He had to have gotten some help. Fortunately, I don't think we have a good look at what happened there. Some jackass on the 61 of the pits, guys. Make sure you get four this time. Yeah, I thought so too. As you heard from Leonid Roderick there, who is on the who is on the spotter stand for Tom Moore, as Ryan Matthews goes by Joe Lennick on the outside. That pit strategy call from Matthews Motorsports seems to have been, at least for now, that seems to have been the right decision. And we've got problems with the 19. Oh no! They're having, they have been under the hood and uh, looking at the right rear of that car for some time. Ingrid Hadlett, long stop for, for the Norwegian and that is very disappointing because that battle she was having with her teammate was quite riveting. But there, looks like they're sending, they're getting ready to send the 19 car back on track so it doesn't look to be terminal. Zach Webster in car 87 is driving for Owen DeGarmo this year and, uh, and oh, big shot into the wall. Oh, he's having definitely having handling problems. That car just shot straight up the track and pancaked the wall. Now Webster needs a good run because Craig Yonser, his teammate, has been blowing him out of the water, and a lot and most everyone was expecting the opposite because of how long Yonser had been out of a Master Cup car. This is the last car to pit. Tony Durbin in car number 12. This is a very, very good drive, very measured drive from the Texan. Here he is coming in, but Tony Durbin leading laps. That is definitely going to look good at the end of the day. Saul Fischl is still leading the race in car number eight. He is well in traffic, and he's not, he's got no patience here, as you can clearly tell. Giving a banging doors of Casey Lester, shaking his fist at him. That's a um, bit uncalled for, I think, but uh, uh, he's got the right to make bad decisions, I guess. Um, uh, Casey Lester, not somebody I think I would pick a fight with if I'm the leader. Uh, as official going by Webster in the 87, and uh, that is Truman Ellison, the 50, that is Mason Yokoyama in the 76. Uh, Yokoyama appears to be um, sliding back a little bit. And um, you see Hadland still going three laps back, but she's still going. That's, uh, that, you got some warriors over there at Lynx Racing, that's for sure. Here is the number two car. That is Cooper. We're gonna. They are doing a battle with the number seven of Cameron Taylor for position. That is Ike Durbin in the 711 right in front of them. Uh, Cooper having a good day so far. As uh, Taylor now coming on the inside. Both these drivers having. Um, I think they're a little surprised how far back they are. And if there's anything Cameron Taylor doesn't want to be, it's lapped by his teammate. But Fischl is driving with a fire under him today. And oh, Cooper shutting the door on Taylor. I don't think any, there's much regard for the fact that the leader's right behind them, but I don't think that's their job to care. Uh, their job is to uh, 
get themselves in contention. And uh, therefore, I think they're going to fight this. And yes, it looks like they are. Taylor goes by Cooper. They, uh, he's got the position on Cooper. But, uh, oh, they're coming back on the outside. Cooper keeps that thing out of the wall. And uh, there is the seven. We got a car around in the front straight away. And Cooper and Taylor coming by. They're going to take the yellow. Oh, my God. What is Hampton doing? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. What? What on earth? Cooper is involved. A lot of damage to the seven car of Cameron Taylor. That is one of the most dangerous things I've seen in a Master Cup race in a very long time. Carl Hampton, we're going to see what happened here. Hampton's a bit, he's cutting it down a bit, and then gets punted by Timothy Ruiz. And Hampton, now what he should be doing is keeping that car on the bottom of the racetrack. Now, he just drives it straight across the racetrack, right into Cameron Taylor. What on earth was he doing? That was beyond ridiculous. Fry Carl Hampton IV. The, uh, um, the young man out of Arkansas. Someone should have told him to stay down. Uh, and I hope Merritt, now we're on, this is the race leader we're on board with. Fischl, now, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 75, he was definitely, uh. Thanks for the heads up, Matt. Oh my God, we were almost in that. Uh, that was, uh, that was a close call, that's for sure. By, uh, as Carl Hampton now. He looks like he's looking for somebody now. I don't think I would be doing that if I'm him. Uh, is he looking for the 33 car, I wonder? Or is he looking for... And who's that? That's Cameron Taylor waiting for him, I think. You know, if I'm uh, Carl Hampton, I think I'd get uh, out of the racetrack and go to the airport and get out of here as quickly as possible. I don't think I uh, stick around and talk to any of the other drivers uh, before the end of today. Uh, if at all possible. Running order on the left as the field takes the restart. Uh, official is still leading the race. Ben Atkins second. Tom Moore last car in the lead lap in car number four. I think Cooper is going to let Fischl go by here. No, they're going to try to fight this anyway uh, and try to get themselves back in contention despite the fact that the two car has a lot of damage. But... Uh, and yeah, official's gonna try. Is gonna have to run away from these cars very quickly. I don't think Matthews Motorsports wants another lap car to ruin their fun today because they have been very quick, very early in the season. Official continuing to. Uh, he's trying to pull away from the two car, but he's also trying to catch the four. Because I don't think Tom Moore is the guy you want to get back in contention if there's a quick yellow. Uh, Tom Moore, very very skilled short track racer. If the round of Los Angeles proved anything. Uh, Saul Fischl also not, not bad on the short tracks himself. Uh, now going back a bit, here's Brandon LaRoe who's running in 10. Mentioned he was having a good start to the year. I think this should be further evidence of that, frankly. Um, the, uh, the young American having a very good run in this Ortega Motorsports car. Of course, Hector Serrano personally drafted him to be in this 25 car. And uh, with Serrano out, uh, out of the car, but still here at the track, mind you, and being a cheerleader, ah, uh, yeah, that's expected and deserved, honestly. Um, with Serrano essentially being a cheerleader for Laroe, um, I think uh, Laroe has kind of turned up the has turned up his A game a bit to try to get a good result for the team, despite their um, not exactly their best weekend so far, let's say. Uh, of course, not a good weekend off the track, I should point out. On the track, they've actually been quite doing quite well. Chris Davenport in car number 17 appears to be turning a new page in his career because um, now that uh, KLTV isn't uh, trying to tell me that he's uh, actually a terrible driver, Davenport is actually uh, proving that he's one of the more reliable and dependable drivers in the field. He's running in 12th, he wants 11th, and um, uh, Captain Island are really going for it here. Eklund! Really trying to get some, get a run in on Davenport there in the 11. Davenport on the apron in that 17 car. He's going to hold on to that spot. Here is Ryan Matthews in the 06 car doing battle with two of the hottest Walter drivers, David Krikorian in the 13 and Joe Olenek right behind him in car 23. Now these are all three guys that we can, I'm, uh, that at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if all three of these guys got a win very, uh, 
um, very soon, actually, because all three have been quite competitive. Uh, Ryan Matthews, very, very fast. David Krikorian and Joe Olenek, we know are fast, uh, have been uh, been quite fast. Olenek, of course, dominated most of San Antonio, let it slip away, and DK has won a couple special events. Ryan Matthews is really bro having a bit of a breakout so far. It seems like that might be a bit early to call that, especially since we have a lot of road courses coming up, but Matthews is not exactly the world's worst road racer. And um, uh, he is an old, he is one, he is an older driver, but he definitely knows what he's doing, and he still has it. He still has quite a bit of pace left in him. Kurt Pliskin in car 16 is uh, running back in 18th place. PSI having a good weekend. His teammate Woodard right in front of him. Of course, they do Oh, drama for the 16. He's there's problems with Pliskin. Mechanical trouble maybe. He's get. Oh no! Oh, Packer Carroll, Casey Lester into into the back of Kurt Pliskin, and uh, I think that must have been a sudden failure there. Did Lester slide in the oil? Yeah, I don't think Lester had enough time to react. I honestly don't think Casey Lester meant to do that. That was, he just had no time to react and it was too late when he finally saw that he was gonna run to the 16. And while that wreck looked very unnecessary, I don't think there was a whole lot Casey Lester could have done about it. Luciano Savarall will lead the field back to the green flag. Saul Fischel, Zelda Ashby, Gaspar D'Souza, and Chris Davenport rounding out the top five with Greg Woodard in sixth. Great restart there by Savarall. Gets a good jump on Fischl. Um, most of the field looked like they took it rather easy. A lot of cars pitted right before the green flag. Savarall in the red, white, and blue air. Lantis 5 car. Here is Arto Kakinen, car number one, all the way back in 15th. He's had a bit of a slow start to the season, has uh, the reigning champion. He had a slow start to the year in his championship winning season as well. And we've got an accident up ahead. Clay Gibson is in it, and Kakinen is as well. There is a lot of damage to the right front of car number one. Suspension damage, you see there, he's pulling them all over, all towards the wall. That is, uh, that looks like that started. Now we're gonna look here at Gibson in the 79, and oh my. He was not up to speed and was exiting the pits very slowly, uh, comparatively slowly, and he just, and Woodard ran right into him. Because, um, he just looked like he parked it on the middle of the trioval almost. The 79 definitely not up to speed. And at that point, you got to let more cars go by. I I can't pin that on Woodard. I think that uh, someone on the 79 car should have told him to either pick the pace up so that he doesn't get run over or to pull that car off the track. Now, here's Anthony Griffith in car number 70. We haven't had enough time to mention him due to all the other craziness happening around him. But Anthony Griffith is running in 17th. He's having a really good run in this uh, uh, Team Thunder car. He's running as a promoter's option. Right in front of him is Craig Yonser, who's running in 16th in that blue 81. And right in front of him is Tim Ruiz. Uh, uh, three guys who are kind of flying under the radar and having excellent runs today. And what on earth was that restart on the inside line? Nobody but Luciano Savarall looked like they were paying attention on that restart. Absolutely nobody. Uh, Savarall getting away uh, just fine. Fischl second. Uh, I think the 55 of Ashby has dropped way back because I see Gaspar D'Souza in that teal and black car running in third. And uh, here's Kuznetsov in the 15 car running in 12. Yes, running in 12, and it looks like a hornet's nest. Right around him, he's got all sorts of other... And there's three wide in front of him. Um, and oh, that's somebody in the wall. That's Ike Durbin in that green and white car. There's John Dilks in that very colorful car. Kuznetsov weaving his way through all of the madness. The, uh, the Russian looking to improve on um, looking to improve on his previous efforts here at Carbondale, which have been a bit lackluster, but uh, Kuznetsov is a bit overdue probably for a first career win. Uh, I would, he's not out of the running yet, but um, he's still got a ways to go. And we've got more trouble here with Craig Yonser as he got into Scott Stoiler and Zelda Ashby. And the 81 is rolling it over. That, uh, that wreck honestly looked like that might have been unavoidable. Just too many cars packed in too small of a space is going to lead to a crash. That's very disappointing because Craig Yonser was having an amazing run today. On board with Tom Moore in car number four. See if we can see it in front of him. Yeah, it looked like uh, somebody, yeah, I think... May have been the 26 and the 81 just ran out of space.
This track isn't that. This track is not that wide. And um, hold on a minute. I think official is going to take over the lead here, but uh, nobody else is holding. Now, Saul official is just retaking the lead because I think everyone did he pit a lap early. I don't think the pit lane was open, but I, I think everyone else pitted with him, thinking it was. Well, uh, I guess that's they're gonna let that go. That looked a little. That looked a little bit odd. Well, either way, Saul Official is gonna be leading the field coming to the restart. Uh, David Krikorian in car 13, last car on the lead lap. Uh, it's, uh, cautions at short tracks. Will ha that'll happen. Now what DK needs is a quick yellow. What Fischl doesn't want to see is a quick yellow. Uh, as now he's uh, going to be trapped in the outside line, but the outside's been quite fast today. Brandon LaRoe on the 25 on the inside. Fischl getting a bit loose in the in car number eight. Ryan Matthews trying to hunt him down. Fischl sweeps around LaRoe. LaRoe doesn't put up a fight. That's the zero. Casey Lester, he's still in the fight in that zero car, but uh, well back. As you see the running order here, so looking at Nathan Orman, who is, is he's a lap down, but he's running in 12th place. Nathan Orman having a really good run so far in this 95 car. Worked his way through the field using strategy more than speed. Sometimes that's how you got to do it, and uh, Orman having a doing a very good job at doing that so far today. I think uh, some people are going to be a lot more aware of him today. Uh, no errors on uh, either the part of the, either the driver or team. But this is good to see some of the independent show cars really being able to get good runs because uh, one big result can mean winning or, winning or losing the independent show at the end of the year. Now, here's Joe Olenek in car 23 trying to get, uh, get clear of the 86 of John Dilks and they're trying to stay ahead of Alessandro Rossini. I don't think Orman's going to be any threat to him because uh, Olenek's been much faster than him all day. As here is Fischl trying to hunt down David Krikorian to put him back a lap down, but that 13 car is pulling away a bit. Casey Lester getting, uh, trying to move out of the way, let Ryan Matthews go by, holding up Brandon LaRoe at the same time, but sometimes you have to pick a, uh, a lesser of two evils, I guess. Um, at least in this case. And uh, Fischl now trying to pull away from Matthews. Here is Gaspar D'Souza, who continues to have an amazing day for Ortega Motorsport. This uh, car number 20 is um, running inside the top 10. And he's, uh, like I mentioned earlier, KLTV ha still has a bit of a relationship with D'Souza, which is um, good to see that at least someone can still stand working with them. But uh, uh, this very distinctive black and teal livery, once again being associated with the uh, Portuguese veteran out of the Azores, he's uh, got a couple wins to his name, including that Thriller at Darlington, a few others to his name. He's also got the, he also holds a bit of a record for uh, the most number of times starting the Coriola Grand Prix from last place, which is the most random stat I've come across, probably, but um, he's done pretty well at that race, too. And that uh, that's definitely something Ortega Motorsport's going to need. Now, here's Greg Woodard running in 16th. PSI just pulled, cut the front end of that car off. He was running in fourth when uh, Clay Gibson happened right in front of him. But um, he's still running in the points despite the fact that the car looks like a modified. Go figure. He's actually he's actually still maintaining minimum speed, which is... Uh, he's actually more than maintaining it. He's faster than a couple cars out there. But uh, it's uh, a bit disappointing for the defending winner of the race. Joe Lennick in car 23 is still, is still putting together a podium run here. That is uh, Savarelli holding off. There's the three car, Rossini, who's also still in this mix. Trying to get by a couple lap cars. They're being rather courteous. But sometimes you have to get by the lapped cars when they're letting you go by. Now, uh, here's Eklund, who is still kind of in the in contention here. But she's trying to... Oh, Ike Durbin into the wall. Eklund kind of running her own race here a bit. And once again, getting in the way here a bit. Uh, I don't think Racine, I don't think this is the car Rossini wants to see uh, because Tony Durbin is coming and Tony Durbin I think is a battle for position. At least the three versus the twelve uh, the twelve is. And here is Ingrid Hadland who who has just set one of the fastest laps of the race. And she's how many laps down? I think five at this point. There's a lot of fight left in the Norwegian. And she's still continuing to, to run some of the quickest laps of the race despite being well out of contention. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go over. 
but she's uh, uh, she's at least uh, uh, adhering to uh, and getting out of the way of some of the faster cars. At least when I say faster cars, I mean cars on the lead lap. Orman in car number f and 95 is going to have to move out of the way to Souza. At least he's going to have no choice here. Oh, Kuznetsov into the wall in the background. Orman, whoa, he's got a bit of a, he's got a problem. Oh, yeah, Orman had a problem. I mean, he must have had a puncture there because that car was wiggling long before he got hit. Got hit by, uh, I think that was Stoidler who was directly behind him. Puncture is unfortunate for Orman because that came at a very inappropriate time. Now, here's DK trying to get around. Lucas grabbed it on the outside, and that came about, that came right before this incident with Orman, and that is what's going to keep David Krikorian on the lead lap in this in that 13 car, and that's how you save your race when you're uh, almost going one lap down. Now, I don't understand this. There are a lot of people that are in the pits right now, yet if you look, if you might not be able to see them, but we're about ready to go green. And I think the officials might have to clamp down on some of this because this is getting a bit ridiculous. We saw what Clay Gibson did. Here's the, here's the field about to take the green. And we've had several cars that are just coming out of the pit lane. They, those spotters on the stand do know what just ha what happened earlier in the day with Clay Gibson, right? I mean, granted, I don't think many of the other drivers are, are, are likely to do anything as dumb as what Clay Gibson did, but there's still a chance of it happening as you see, there is Kuznetsov. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a mess. Oh, now, I'm oh, Kuznetsov into the side of his teammate. I don't think he had any choice there. But this is getting a bit ridiculous, don't you think? I mean, Davenport in the 17 there got lucky. But, uh, and so did everyone else, frankly. Eklund in car number 11 running down Scott Stoidler. And I think this is for possession. The Swede is still in the fight here. And um, uh, Liv Eklund in car number 11. There is, uh, I, she's been getting a lot of headlines for some of the wrong reasons. I thought we'd give uh, at least acknowledge the fact that now she's getting them for the right reasons. She's uh, running quite well today. Tom Moore also we need to shine a light on him because he's been having a this is a battle for position, actually, with Yokoyama, I believe. Yes, it is. Now, in the Independence Trophy car, Yokoyama, Tom Moore, and Tim Ruiz, I think that is, of all three of these guys, battling for position. Ruiz's car is hurt. The uh, four-car Factory Volpe has charged his way through the field and avoided some rather ridiculous driving today. And um, uh, Mason Yokoyama, the young independent from Texas. Saul Fischl and Luciano Savarol doing a battle for third here. Two of the faster cars on the track today. Ryan Matthews right behind them is actually in this battle as well. Fischl going around Savarol, so you can get, you can pass on the inside here, on the outside here. This is why Carbondale's been a staple of the circuit for as long as it has, because there are so many lines here. Um, yep, some, yet <laughs> we've seen so many people run out of lines to run, and they uh, cause problems. Tony Durbin with the defending there. Uh, the the uh, much more experienced Texan trying to hold off Fischl here. Don't think Durbin's gonna have too many, uh, gonna be able to hold him off for that much longer. 12 car isn't that much faster than the eight after all. Fischl throwing it into the dog league, but Tony Durbin gets a great run off. That looks like to be where Fischl might be weakest, maybe, or uh, maybe not, because there he goes on the inside. Drag racing Durbin down to turn one, uh, down the main straightaway. Durbin had him at the line. No, actually, no, we get uh, update. Fischl got him, just barely at the line, and uh, Fischl in the eight. Uh, he's got second for now, and he's going to be able to clear Tony Durbin, I think. Yes, there he goes, as we got another battle kicking up here between David Krikorian, Luciano Savarola, and Ryan Matthews. See, Krikorian holding off Fischl as long as he could, paid off. He's now back in contention to get on the podium, possibly. Matthews going on the inside. DK, three wide. Is that really going to be an option here? Oh, good. He thinks better of it. Oh, maybe not. Oh, no. No, he's lost it. There goes the five of Savarol. No, well, Lennox, nowhere to go. Cooper's involved in the background. Casey Lester in another one. And a big accident here with just, uh, with just about 20 laps to go. That was an ambitious move late in the race. David Krikorian going for everything. The hole was there. The hole was there, and then it wasn't. Savarol cut down on him a bit at the last second. Oh, no, that was a big shot by that Elena gave Savarol. The Brazilian climbed out of that car, and Olenek definitely nowhere to go. Woody Watts involved as well. 
Oh, this is late in the race, and um, oh, that's what happened to Watts. John, John Dilks must, John Dilks slid to the bottom to try to avoid it, and Woody Watts nowhere to go. Honestly, that looks like that is that would be an easy one to pin on David Kerkorian, but there's nine, there were 19 laps to go. Hard racing between all three, between three drivers. Sometimes those things will happen. Sometimes I can't really put a blame on. I can't really fault David Krikorian for that one as much as some of the other things we've seen today. As Davenport leads the field to the restart on lap 137 to 150, Fischl right behind him in car number eight. That has been the fastest car all day long. Tony Durbin in the hunt. Tony Durbin in car number 12, looking for his first podium in a very long time. Davenport holding off Fischl in car number 17. The Aratel car is sliding a bit wide. He's sliding a bit wide because Nietzsche trying to insert himself into the fight by getting back in the lead lap. Maybe. For Davenport defending again. The, uh, the man from Oakland, Captain Eyeliner, as we've uh, lovingly called him over the years, trying to hold off the sensation Saul Fischl. Davenport continues to defend here. This is a good defense by Davenport, who's clearly doesn't have the raw pace that Fischl does at this at this time, but he's he's clearly showing something. He's showing a lot of poise, and he's there goes to look at Fischl. He's trying to take him around the outside in turn one. What a move by Fischl as he's going to try to make the trying to cut it in. No, he's sliding it wide. He's not giving Davenport any room here to to come back. And what a what a drive by Fischl to cut around Davenport on the outside. Great move by Fischl. And I'm and that is despite some controversy about around him this weekend. Mason Yokoyama, that 76 car is battered. It is bruised. But the young Texan and his team continue to continue to plug on there in 14th. And this is going to be a huge result if he's able to hang on to it. And uh, there's, a, there's a reason why some people thought he was an even money favorite to win the Independence Trophy. A result like this could very uh, well is uh, why. Letting Hunt go by. Hunt's not really a factor, I don't believe. But Yokoyama really turning some heads today and impressing for all the right reasons. He had a couple of runs in uh, very subpar machinery several years ago. But uh, he's uh, showing why. He is uh, looks like he's a very competent uh, driver and is... Uh, Got a good family team behind him. Car number 76, watch for him. Two more guys to keep an eye on. Tom Moore and Gaspar D'Souza, cars four and 20, have really blazed their way through the field. Moore has a lap behind D'Souza, but he's running at nine, trying to chase down Liv Eklund. But he's having an excellent run here, and this is the type of run that'll win you a championship, being able to overcome bad qualifying efforts when you need to. Gaspar D'Souza in car number 20 is doing exactly what that team needs of him. And that is uh, put a big result when uh, Team Morrell might be down or when they're in a bad position. Go, good runs for both these guys, and they deserve a bit of extra attention. Liv Eklund in car number 11 has uh, been bad. That car is bad at all to hell. She had a recent encounter with the turn one wall. I don't think that had anything involved to do with the car in front of her. Wouldn't be surprised, though. Back during, uh, before the season started, some people were predicting Saul Fischl would uh, be able to have a run at the championship, even though he's a rookie. And uh, everyone that predicted that, this is uh, giving them further ammo, because runs like this are exactly why Fischl was imperious throughout the uh, race today, leading over 100 laps as he takes his maiden TM Master Cup Series victory here in Carbondale. Fischl thanked his team, his crew chief, his spotter, and, quote, Jewish genius, unquote, for his victory. Yikes on that last one. Davenport fended off Matthews to take home second. That's a result that I don't think anyone predicted out of either of them. Alessandro Rossini and Tony Durbin completed the top five. Good runs for the both of them. Big round of applause for Gaspar D'Souza getting a sixth place that that team absolutely needed. And Ben Atkins was the last car in the lead lap in seventh. Liv Eklund was the first car one lap down. And she had some rather interesting things to say in her post-race interview. Eklund did not comment on the problems her teammate faced earlier in the race, but only said that, quote, it's disappointing that a guy can accuse everyone else of anti-Semitism and then be rewarded like this. Maybe being related to the race director helps, unquote. If you're guessing as to whether or not she was invited to the steward's office again, you would be correct. Makes you pine for the days we had some good old intentional wrecking on track because as stupid as some of that could get, at least it's not this. 
Tom Moore came home in ninth, and Adrian Devereaux rounded out the top ten. A very quiet tenth for the former three-time champion, I'd like to point out. Great run from Anthony Griffith to bring Tenere Motorsports home in 11th place. He's a very good short track driver, and they desperately needed a good result today. Brandon LaRoe is a very capable and underrated driver who also got a good result for Ortega Motorsport. And Scott Soiler get a good, gets a good run in 13th. And Mason Yokoyama, the Texan, brings that car home 14th. Best result for an independent trophy car yet this year. Gareth Hunt with a solid run for Tutino in 15th. Ashby 16th. Uh, Timothy Ruiz continues his good start to the year with another points finish in 17th. Kuznetsov, Ellison, and Scott Bates round out the top 20. One quick look at the Drivers' Championship after three races, and Tom Moore leads the way on 129 points. Fischl in second on 120, and Davenport in third. That's a little bit of a surprise. And then Ryan Matthews in fourth. That's a bigger surprise. And Adrian Damaro rounding out the top five. Cameron Taylor, Ben Atkins, Alessandro Rossini all have had great starts to the year. Luciano Savarol continuing to impress in ninth. And Tony Durbin rounding out the top ten. That's a bit of a surprise. Tony Durbin's team is getting off the ground quite well. It's a little bit of a surprise to see no Richter or Hodges Walter cars in the top 10 in the championship. But right here, 11th through 13th, you have Marco Castaneda, Joe Olenek, and Arto Kekkonen. And I think it's only a matter of time before they start to reel off some points here. Scott Bates is having a quiet start to the year in 14th, but that's usually how he conducts business. Zelda Ashby and Kurt Pliskin are both doing very well to start the year off. Kuznetsov in 17th, Gaspar D'Souza getting off the ground well. With 27 points, Liv Eklund is 19th in the championship, provided she doesn't get a penalty for correctly pointing out that the Reinhardts and the officials are related by marriage. And Kevin Dwyer is 20th right now, but he won't be for much longer because remember, Dwyer is running a partial schedule this year. One look at the Independence Trophy shows that Mason Yokoyama's result today is really, really going to help him in his bid to win the Independence Trophy and that DNF from Leicester is really not going to help. However, they can still make up for it if they qualify for a special event or get a promoter's option. Of the first three races this year, Carbondale might be the most telling as to how a car will perform over the entire season. However, we haven't yet hit a road course yet, and we have a bunch of road courses coming up, the first of which being one of the most famous tracks in the United States, Road Atlanta, near Atlanta, Georgia, which will play host to the Round of Georgia. If you'd like to watch some previous events in the series, check out this list over here, or check out this video from a friend of the show.